Now this is a Ford F-150. It's not a Raptor, it's a Platinum. This just looks like a Raptor because of the wheels. This is a Platinum, this is more luxurious edition. Now this is an American car, it's imported from America. It's left hand drive. It looks like an American car. It's an American car. I've got the keys to this because I've dropped my Audi for BD Performance and they own this and I insisted or coerced them to give me this car and let me own it for a week. So I have been owning this F-150 in London for a week. Now I'm not sure if asking them to lend me this was a very good idea, but I suppose all good stories start from the beginning. So, I did text him last night, I was like, let me take the truck, please. And I think he was half asleep and said, why not? Don't think he remembered actually agreeing. Well, you agreed, Darren, so we're taking the truck. Um, I didn't tell Darren this, uh, but this is the first time I've ever driven a left-hand drive car. A left -hand drive car. Um, not the best one to start off in, but we've got this for a week, so I'm gonna be doing a, what's it like, owning one of these for a week. I've never driven one of these. Darren is saying the fuel is absolutely horrendous. It's left on drive. It is massive. It is absolutely massive. Now I'm hoping you guys on camera can get a sense of the size of this thing. It is absolutely outrageously big in every single way. It even got to the point where I went through a toll road on the M25 and it put us through as a HGV. So here is another downside to this truck. If I was on my own, I'd have to get out of the car. So we can't go for Mackey's drive throughs KFC drive throughs Burger King drive throughs M6 toll drive throughs Luckily, they've got a passenger right now. If I was on my own, I'd look a bit of a twat. It's it pulls through as a HGV. We've just paid £11.50 to go on the M6 toll. It's six quid as a car. Now this is a Platinum Edition. So the Platinum Edition is a bit more of the luxurious version over the Raptor. The Raptor actually comes with more horsepower, it's faster, but it's not as comfortable. This is more luxurious edition. So the main biggest difference is the Raptor comes with wheels like this and the seats in these have massages and they don't just massage your back, they massage your bum. But what BD have done here is this is the best of both worlds. So yes, it's a platinum edition, but we've got big HRE wheels, big off-road tires, and they've used a, one of their beta maps. So they've put one of their maps on the car. So this is the running the same power now as a Raptor, which is a between 400 and 450 horsepower, uh, but you get the luxurious edition inside. So this here, is the best of both worlds. Now I'm just gonna do that again. Now you can hear that that sounds pretty light, right? And that's because the whole body on these is made out of aluminium and high strength steel. So it's a lot lighter. These actually weigh around 2.1 tons. Now that sounds a lot. When you put that to the new C63S, which weighs 1.9 tons, this doesn't seem that bad, considering the size of it. The quick people in the comments will be actually adding those two numbers up. 400 horsepower, two tons. Yes, that has a much better power to weight ratio than a Civic Type R EP3. Civic Type R EP3 has 160 horsepower per ton. Now, if you're just basing this off 400 horsepower, which is the minimum amount it's got, this has got 190. Now I've got a lot more facts and fun things to talk about these because these actually are a really fun vehicle. I say vehicle because now I'm now American. But you all want to see what it's driving, what it's, drive, what it's like to drive on UK rules. So let's hop in, finish these facts and take you for a spin in this absolutely enormous vehicle. An amazing feature that these have, uh, you have these automatic step loads. As soon as you open the door, the step loads come down and trust me, you need them because it's a good three feet step to get in this bloody thing. Right. Here we go. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This is the easy bit, mate. Oh, my God. I can't see a thing, mate. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Jesus swing wide and then hopefully don't have to reverse <laughs> the 
thing and have to reverse. Oh my god, this is so f I'm so close to that fucking barrier. Hello, can I get a bacon roll meal, please? Oh my god. I'm not gonna make it round. Oh, this is absolutely terrifying, everyone. Jesus Christ. Right, okay, how are we gonna do this? Thank you. Cheers, thank you. But as soon as you get in here, it's massive. Like, it is so big. Normal cars, okay, you can kind of see in your peripheral, you know, the other side of the bonnet, maybe the wing mirror. You can kind of just see the wing mirror if anything comes in and out. You know, if, you, if you've been good on COD, noticing little movements, you would notice it. With this, you have to do a full kind of 45 degree turn to see the wing mirror. See the wing mirror. Now, interesting fact time. These come with a 3.5 litre twin turbo V6 or a 5 litre V8, okay? Now, this is a 3.5 litre V6. Now, interesting fact, this is the same engine that comes out of the new Ford GT. Now, I'm gonna tell you the MPG of this car. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to guess what it gets. Okay, you're wrong. I'm gonna sit here and say, oh, it gets this, but it doesn't actually get us a lot higher, which is what most car owners do for some reason. Or they say it gets lower. I don't know why people lie about it. I'm gonna tell you what it actually gets, okay? I reset the, I reset it in Wrexham in Wales. I reset it and I drove four hours on a motorway at 65 mile an hour and I'm averaging 14.7 miles to the gallon on a motorway. But, in London we have a thing called a ULES, which is basically, it's a scam basically, it's a government scam, right? Uh, and the ULES stands for Ultra Low Emission Zone. Now if you don't have a car that meets these low emission regulations, you have to pay £12.50 to drive down a road. 30 miles outside the capital. Yes, that's correct, people. £12.50 a day to drive in a road within 20 or 30 miles of the capital. Now, this way, it confused me. This gets fucking 12 to the gallon, right? Petrol, 12 to the gallon. This is ULES complaint, meaning I can drive this in the ULES, which is, which is awesome, but my diesel Audi that gets 50 to the gallon, I'm not allowed to drive. Now, what's it like to drive on UK road uh, uh, terrible it's well it's not that bad you just can never take a mental second break you have to be aware every single second of where you are because you have to just hug with it being left on drive you have to just hug the left hand side of the road just hug the left hand side of the road and pray to god that your right hand side of the car is on the other side of the road most times it's gonna be you just got to be kind of aware that other people can see it and then they'll go on their left side of the road it's, it's just so big. I have no idea where the right side is. No idea my wheel. No idea what's to the right mix. I cannot see the wing mirror. That's in a different postcode. Now, the cool thing about this is you actually have four drivetrain modes. One of them is a rear-wheel drive, and the other three are different variations of a of a, of a locked four-wheel drive. So we've got like four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive all time, etc. You would think with how tall it is, it's kind of like boaty as anything, there's terror around corners. When you go over bumps and you're not going over, it's kind of like, whoa, you know? But like round corners, it's nowhere near as like dangerous as a, as the lifted Land Rover feels. Nowhere near, it actually feels quite planted. And I'm surprised at how light it is because you think it'd be all over show, but like you, you can drive this comfortably relatively quick. Like it actually handles quite well, like it's responsive. It doesn't feel super vague like most lifted off-roaders drive feel like, where it's just like you have no idea where the wheels are pointing and it just grips. And because of these like off-road, like all-terrain tires, it actually drives all right. Like you could drive this relatively the speed of a normal car and be comfortable with it. But the brakes are massive on these. It stops like super quick. You, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't be worried about emergency braking. It drives for a lifted truck, nice. 
it drives nice. The engine, with it being a 3.5 twin turbo, it's, it's responsive, it's torquey, um, and it's actually pretty fast, this car. Um, you, you wouldn't actually think it'd be as quick as it is, but when you look at the numbers, the power it's got and the way it is, there's no reason why it shouldn't be. The transmission isn't as quick as the engine, so you feel the transmission being a little bit sloppy behind the, the, the engine sometimes, but other than that, it's... Uh, it's actually nice to drive. The hardest thing for me is that I'm having a constant battle with myself of is it practical or is it not practical? Because I've been in situations where it's been amazing. The bed in the back pops down, chuck your tools in, chuck whatever in, chuck a set of tires in. There's been an issue where I've had to just tow a car about 10 meters back. There's ropes in the back, rope around the tow up, pull it back. It's amazing. Everything fits in. It's huge in here. You have so much storage. This thing's like Narnia, mate. But it's just not practical because the fuel economy is so bad, you can't take the thing anywhere. I've been to multiple car parks now where this thing just won't fit. It's too tall. They've got barrows in the top. The, turn, the turning circle's okay, but just because the length of it, the rear wheelbase, again, is in a different postcode. So it's just really hard to take anywhere. I couldn't even go to the gym last night because all the car parts, this wouldn't get in it. But what's it been like to own? overall sick you feel like the man you feel like the absolute man driving this everyone looks at like four i've had so many people go that's sick that's sick and i'm like i know it's mine i know it's pretty sick right but then again then you have this little little demon in the back of your head saying you look like you're trying to compensate for something <laughs> You look like you've got a small penis. So I suppose to end off with the million dollar question, would I own it? Would I have one? Yes, absolutely I would have one. But for me personally in the situation now, I would have to take the all road tires off and just put some road tires on. Um, just so you, you could maybe get in the 20 MPGs, which makes it somewhat feasible. Uh, but at the minute as it is now, it's just doing these like round town trips. You're getting like less than 10 to the gallon. And it's just, it's, it's just so much money for something that isn't fast. Do you know what I mean? It's so much money for something that gives you ease of use to do more things. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you all agree with the points. See, everyone stares at this car. Hope you agree with the points. I love you all, and we'll see you in the next one.